Um, so I'm going to talk about open workshops. And I think it's actually good that we're following up on Philippa's presentation because there was quite a bit of overlap. So um, I started talking about something that I was familiar with that I started in Lund, Sweden, and then we broadened the discussion. So just a brief description of what I was doing. It's um, like a, rather than a workshop, it's more of an open group. So it's a weekly meeting at a permaculture mentor's house um, where we would have a potluck and discuss permaculture theory, followed by a couple of hours of putting permaculture into practice on an area that already has uh, permaculture aspects in place. This was a money-free um, group, and it was open to anybody who wanted to come at any time, so there was no commitment of people needing to say they would make it every so often. If someone wanted to just come once, that was fine. Um, what ended up happening was that there was kind of a core group of people who came almost every single time for the duration of about three months, and a few people who came four to ten times, and then a few people who only came once. But it ended up working really well, um, and the target group was permaculture skeptics, because uh, as a student in Lund who was really interested in permaculture, I tried to talk about this to people, and a lot of people thought that permaculture was very dogmatic, and they didn't really know much beyond the term permaculture. And this strategy, not being a course, so not having this commitment factor, actually was more inviting to them. And a lot of them ended up very quickly turning into permaculture enthusiasts when they could see with their own eyes what permaculture was, um, hear the theory, and actually do, do things together. So one important aspect that our group talked about was this doing things together, which really kind of solidifies the interest in permaculture. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay, we also expanded it to beyond like my model. So Davey was talking about the meetup strategy that could be one other vehicle for these kinds of open groups, not course-based. And then um, Peter said he did a tour of Greece and that incorporated parts of this as well. Maybe you could just give a quick comment. I'm about to do a tour of Greece about for six weeks with a PDC in the middle. That is going to fund um, my time there to do introduction talks and perma blitzes around Greece for four weeks either side of that PDC. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of free events to get people inspired and connected with permaculture, and it's funded by a PDC in the middle. This is in June? June and July, yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, so then we started talking about how this effect of having a mentor and then creating a core group can lead to things like dragon dreaming. And then we kind of had Davey in, who gave us some really good insight from, I think he was at Philippa's table, and the need for improving this strategy to make it even more effective to use new vocabulary again. So rather than labeling it permaculture, we were thinking of things like um, regenerative agriculture, depending again on the specific local target group, um, offering the idea of a good life rather than permaculture. Um, because this appeals to things that a lot of people are struggling with, the nine to five, the yeah, really long work weeks, being in debt, not owning a home, a lot of, yeah, things like that. Um, addressing a common need. So Davey gave the example of in Ireland, water, like the fact that people are gonna need to pay for water pretty soon. So kind of hiding permaculture in a Trojan horse, saying that we're gonna address this common need that you have and then showing how you can do that through the application of permaculture principles. And, and we we're also discussing this term free. So yes, it's a free um, event uh, or a free group to participate in, but it's, it's money free. It's not free because there's still an exchange of energies. So for example, in my case, we performed work on our mentor's land, which she actually wanted to have done. And in exchange, she gave us knowledge and a place to unite. So that's something to keep in mind. It's never actually free. Um, and this can lead into talks about alternative currencies and other forms of exchange that are non-monetary as well. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay.